Today is the 4th of July. For this day, I would have liked to review a game about the American War of Independence, but I just haven't played any recently. So I'm going to review a game still about an important and iconic event in American history, The Alamo, and the game is a Blood Red Banner, The Alamo. This game is published by Victory Point Games. It is a solitaire game where the player takes the role of the Texian units besieged in the Alamo, and the AI uh, leads the overwhelming Mexican army against the uh, player. It is a game based on the same system that you have in the States of Siege series by Victory Point Games. However, this is a simplified version of that system. Um, that means that it can be used as an introduction to that system, not that that system is particularly complicated and necessarily requires an intermediate introductory step. Um, I think you can just you know try those games without an introduction, but if you want to have an introduction, then you have the option with this game. Um, to me, it is a game that is interesting because it gives me the sense that I'm playing a game similar to those in that series, which I like, um, and much less time. And these days, I, I like to have the flexibility. If it's a night where my daughter is suffering from a mix of teething, stuffy nose, and demonic possession, um, and I only have breaks that are 10-15 minutes each between my interventions, then I can set up this game and play. The question, of course, is, is this game fun? Is it worth setting up and playing it, well, today we're going to find out. In this game you have counters representing the enemy units. Each enemy unit has a printed value that represents the combat value. Some units have two counters because those units can be in regular status, so ready to fight, or they can be in disorder status. And depending on the status you will use a different marker to indicate the position of that unit on the board. Then you have the map itself representing the Alamo with a central area here, which is the area of the Alamo inside the walls, a series of areas with a one printed on, and those represent the walls. And then departing from there, you have different tracks that the enemies will use to march against the Alamo. Then you have two markers representing your heroes. You have David Crockett and William Travis. At the beginning of the game, the heroes can be placed in the Alamo or in any of the boxes representing the walls. There's also an optional rule that would allow you to add a hero, Jim Bowie, but again, this is optional. In the basic game, you only have two heroes. And then, as you would expect from a game inspired by the State of Siege series, you have a deck of cards, and the cards will tell you the actions that the enemies will perform, the actions that are available to you that turn, and each card also has a text here that gives historical information and adds historical flavor to the game. Setup in this game is ridiculously fast. All you need to do is to place your two heroes on the map, shuffle the cards, and that's it, you're good to start. Each turn starts with you drawing a card and activating the units indicated on the card. If the unit indicated on the card is not on the board yet, then you spend that activation placing the unit on the board. You roll a die and the, the, the die will tell you which track the unit will use and you can have up to two units on the same track and you can also have units that are stacking on top of each other. For example, we just rolled a three, then we have to activate that unit and then we we place it there and then we um, roll for this other unit because it is not on the map yet and look what a coincidence we roll a four just there so we place that other unit on the map there and that's in and that's it for this turn each unit was activated once to enter uh, the map if the card instructs you to activate a unit that is already on the map like this one then you just move the unit to the next available box on its track. However, if the unit is trying to enter a space that has a one in it, that is to enter a wall space, or if a unit is trying to, like this one is trying to enter that space, and this one is trying to enter the Alamo. So if a unit is trying to enter uh, the walls or the Alamo, then that unit has to roll a die to see if it manages to successfully storm the defenses of the area. Uh, you roll a die for that unit when the unit is instructed to advance on the walls or in the Alamo. If you roll the same as or less than the combat value printed on the unit, then the unit is successfully is successful and moves into the next space. If you roll more than 
the combat value of that unit, nothing happens. Uh, if a unit is trying to move into an area that has a hero in it, then you add plus one to the die roll. So the hero is defending the area, um, the enemy unit is less likely to enter the area, but if the enemy unit is still successful, then the unit moves in and it kills the hero. Certain card effects may force a certain enemy units to become disordered. That means that you will replace the regular counter for that unit with a disordered counter. The next time that that unit activates, you will spend its activation to replace the disordered marker with the regular marker. That means that when a unit is disordered, then it will waste an activation to reorganize itself. After you activate the enemy units indicated by the card, finally it is your time to act. Each card will give you two or one attack markers that you can use for that turn and you cannot save them for later turns. These attack markers really are mainly reminders of how many attacks you have available for that turn. And these attack markers represent cannons and other weapons that are going to be used in the Alamo or on the walls. So they're abstracted, you don't see them on the map. Each of these attack markers simply indicates that uh, you can launch an attack against any enemy unit which is on any one, two or three space on the board. Attacking is extremely simple. You choose a target, you roll a die, and if you roll more than the combat value printed on that unit, then that unit has to retreat one space, otherwise nothing happens. But remember, you also have your heroes. Each hero can be activated in this phase and it can be activated for combat or for movement, not both. A hero activated for movement can move from the walls to the Alamo or from the Alamo to any box on the walls or from a box on the wall to another box on the wall as long as the two boxes are adjacent and that means connected by a dash line. If activated for combat, the heroes can fire at one enemy and they don't have the same range that attack markers have. So they can only fire at an enemy which is in a box uh, adjacent to them, that means a box number two if they are on the walls of the Alamo or if they're in the Alamo at an enemy which is in any one box on the walls or they can fire at an enemy that is in a box connected to the hero through a blue arrow, or uh, at an enemy in a box connected to the hero through a dash line. Heroes attack exactly like attack markers do, however, if a hero is on the wall of the Alamo and it is firing at an enemy which is in the box number 2 of the hero's track, then the hero receives a plus 1 die roll modifier when attacking. I guess that represents the advantageous position that the hero is firing from. And this is pretty much the game. You keep drawing cards, activating enemy units, activating your heroes and using attack markers, and you keep following this procedure until either you go through the entire card deck or an enemy unit enters the Alamo, in which case the game ends immediately. At the point you count the number of cards left in the deck. If you went through the entire deck, of course, the number will be zero. So if at the end of the game you have zero to two cards left in the deck, you will have obtained a Texian Moral Victory. Otherwise, depending again on the number of cards left in the deck at the end of the game, you will have different possible results. I like this game. I like this game. A lot. I think it is a small gem. It is a small game, so the gem is small, but the category is still precious stones, meaning it still shines. Uh, it is a game that really draws you in because the action is continuous, the game is so fast, so furious, it really uh, keeps you hooked at all times. You do not have many choices, many options of things that you can do, true, but you still get the sense that those choices that you make are important. Um, they can still make the game go one way or another. Sure, the luck is a huge factor, uh, but and the AI is going to overwhelm you, but this is the Alamo so what do you expect? But still, you get the sense that your, you know, your influence on the game is important. You still are, to an extent, the protagonist of the game. 
and of course that's what that is what makes the game interesting and fun I like the fact that you can set it up so easily and play it so quickly in 5-15 minutes which is also I believe why the game is so ridiculously addictive once you start playing it you start losing if you still have 20 minutes available I challenge you not to use those 20 minutes to play the game you will find yourself setting up the game one game after the other because it is fun and it's just it is hard not to think that the next game you're going to figure out the way to, to, to win the game. Um, I like the fact that you know it can be used in so many situations because you can play it in 5-15 minutes so if you're a busy daddy like me it is great to have the possibility of playing a, a full game in one of your short breaks. If you're trying to learn a game which is very complicated and a real pain in the neck to learn well also it's good to be able to play a short game here and there as a break from that. You can play during your lunch break a lot of situations in which this game uh, can be it can be played and can really be enjoyable so this game definitely is a nice little game but especially a nice little game we use very often for many games so here I want to be more specific and to say that this is a nice little game that is nicer than most nice little games I recommend it it's a very fun game oh and let's not forget happy fourth